Let's consider another example using the hydrogen atom and the Schrodinger equation in quantum mechanics. Let's suppose that the electron and the nucleus uh, were stationary. They didn't move. And that's our system. The electron just sits there. The proton does, just sits there and just moves. Uh, doesn't move at all. Now let's write down the quantum mechanical Hamiltonian for this system. All right. So we'll start with a classical Hamiltonian. H is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy V. Since these uh, particles, the electron and the proton, are not moving, the kinetic energy is zero. And then the potential energy is just the Coulomb, Coulombic interaction. Here's the proton, here's the electron. They're stationary. They're separated by some distance r. So it's just minus e squared. That's the charge on the electron. And that's the same as the charge in the proton. And there's a minus sign because the electron has a negative charge over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Okay, so the Hamiltonian classically is just minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Now to go from the classical to quantum mechanical, we replace the various things with operators. So the Hamiltonian is just minus e squared over 4 pi, these are just constants, epsilon naught. And what's the operator for distance? It just is distance. It means multiply by distance. So in this case, the Hamiltonian classically and quantum mechanically are the same, except this now is considered as an operator. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. Now describe the form of the wave functions that satisfy the Schrodinger equation for this system. All right, so let's, there's the Hamiltonian. Let's write down the Schrodinger equation. H psi is equal to E psi. Well, we have the Hamiltonian minus E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r psi is equal to E. Oh, I guess I got too many bars on that E there. E psi. Hmm. All this is doing is multiplying. It's just a multiplicative constant. There's no derivatives in here or anything. Uh, so it appears that this wave function, uh, there's no constraints. It could be anything. And in fact, if you just divide through by the wave function, you'll get the energy is equal to minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. And this is just the Coulombic energy. So quantum, mecha quantum mechanically or classically doesn't matter. Uh, as long as particles aren't moving, there's no difference. It's that motion that gives the, um, the Schrodinger equation. It's a funny thing when you have a momentum in uh, which you have when a particle is moving then you start taking, start taking derivatives and things happen. But if everything is stationary, no big deal. The uh, Hamiltonian quantum mechanically is the same as that um, classically, and the energy is just what you get from classical. Okay. So is the, the energy of the system quantized? Briefly explain your answer. The answer is no. Here you have the only energy term here is the Coulombic attraction between your positive and negative charges. And this is the distance r. So r can be anything. OK, so there's no quantization. There's no constraints on this um, distance between the negative charge and the positive charge. Whereas in the hydrogen atom, we had the electron moving on the surface of a sphere and that quantized energy levels. And there was only certain values of this separation given by the radial uh, part of the um, wave function uh, <clears throat> that this was allowed to be. It's only because uh, motion that you get quantization. And qualitatively, uh, well, Maybe we could find that qualitatively again. Remember the argument for quantum mechanics was particles um, are associated with waves. So a particle that has a mass has associated with it a wavelength. And the wavelength is at the Broglie wavelength. Lambda is equal to h over p, Planck's constant. p 
is equal to um, mass times velocity. So if you have no velocity, if everything is static, if that's equal to zero, then your de Broglie wavelength goes to infinity. So there is no de Broglie wavelength for everything that's just sort of sitting around. It has to be moving and has to have some sort of momentum. If we lived in a completely static universe that nothing ever moved, then there'd be no quantum effects. Of course, that wouldn't be a very fun universe to live in.